Hey guys, today I want to show you how I used a $5 smart switch to automate my garage door. I'll also show you how to avoid making the mistake I did and costing myself 50 bucks. For this project, I used a Sonoff Basic $5 smart switch, a screwdriver, and a Dremel. I also used a power cord from an old appliance that still had a plug on it. Typically this switch is used in line in a power cord for an appliance or for a lamp and is used to send mains power right through to the appliance when the switch is turned on. Garage doors are typically opened and closed by closing the push button circuit temporarily. For our application we don't want to send power through the switch, we just want it to close a circuit. To do this we're going to have to modify the internals of the switch a little bit. The first step is going to be to cut the trace that supplies 120 volts to the input of the relay using a Dremel or a razor blade. This prevents the power from being passed through the switch and into your garage door opener. Definitely make sure you cut all the way through. The next step is to reroute the neutral wire from the output of the device to the input of the relay. This effectively makes it so that when you turn the switch on, it's closing a circuit between the line and neutral terminals. After that, I cut a little slice in the housing just to get it to fit together properly. This is a pretty janky way to do it, but it worked. So the next thing you're going to do is run a wire from each output terminal to the common and the push button terminals. This way, turning the switch on is just closing that circuit. The problem is you only want to temporarily close it, like you're pushing a button. That's where this switch is awesome because in the app you can set it to emulate a push button. Download the app and set up the device. then. Select the device and go to its settings and choose inching settings. Turn on inching and set the duration for 0.5 seconds. After this is set up, you can test it by pressing the button on the switch. You should hear a click as the relay turns back off after half a second. Alright, so we're done. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Definitely make sure you cut all the way through. Definitely make sure you cut all the way through. Definitely make sure you cut all the way through. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! So, here's what happens when you apply 120 volts to something that's not supposed to have 120 applied to it. When I pressed the on button, uh, I heard a pop, saw some smoke, and it looks like I blew the traces right out of the board. Evidently, I didn't cut all the way through, or there was something bridging that gap, maybe a piece of solder or something. No worries, it could be fixed. He think it's over. Ah! It ain't up. It ain't over. I decided to replace every single trace that blew out with a little wire that I soldered in place. Uh, it sorta of worked. So I was able to get it so that the garage door would open and close, but for some reason the presence sensor that's at the bottom of the door that watches for anything obstructing the door, that uh, no longer functions. So since that doesn't work, uh, my garage door can't really shut because it thinks there's something in the way. I replicated this process with the second garage door opener, but I actually cut all the way through the trace and I even put some electrical tape in the gap to make sure nothing would conduct. The last thing I did was I made a Google routine so that I could open the garage door and close it by voice. I actually did two routines, one for opening, one for closing, but they're really both just triggering the same thing, just turning the switch on for a second. I'm gonna show them up here on the screen. Pretty basic, easy to make. Have any questions, leave a comment. That's all for now, folks, thanks.
See ya. Hey Google, open the garage door. Hey Google, close the garage door. <laughs>